Lord, it's all about you. It's all about you. We give you glory. Have your way today in our lives. We magnify you. We honor you today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. All right. You may be seated in the presence of the Most High God. Right. We are going to unpack some scripture today as we try and uh, unravel um, and maybe wrap up what we believe the, our need to recalibrate um, success is. Um, our theme scripture that we'll be looking at is Joshua chapter 1. Verse 6 to 8. The Lord will help us tonight. The Lord will help us. I have a few things that I need to share. Um, um, and the Holy Spirit, help me to make sense of all. All right. Scripture says, be strong and be of good courage. For unto this people thou shalt divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give to them. Verse 7, only be thou what? Be thou strong and be what? Be what? So it says be strong and be very courageous, right? Uh, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. Now, now, I want us to see the context here of what God is saying. Um, your strength and courage is so that you have the ability to do according to the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Right? And it says, turn not from it from the right or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithsoever way ye go. Verse 8, it says, this book of the law. I want you to see that again. It says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but thou shalt meditate on it day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is within. For then, then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. The Lord bless the reading of his word. I want to stick uh, with the latter portion of this verse 8. Um, and I want you to understand this, that the, there is no prosperity outside of obedience in God. I, I don't care what it looks like. Right? I, there is, now, 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 please, please listen to me. What you call prosperity you are saying as long as somebody has money, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that, right? But the Bible here says, the book of the law shall not depart from thy mouth, and thou shalt meditate on it day and night, that thou may, mayest observe to do according to all that is written in. Now, this now tells us that the context of what we call success, success must always be contextualized in obedience. Right? If that is the case, that means the enemy can offer us success that contravenes obedience to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He can offer you an option, right? What God is saying is that the way to success is, the, is through obedience. It's a narrow path. That, that path is filled with, 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 with favor. Right? The Bible says you crown the year with your goodness. Even the hard pathways drip with abundance. I believe that's Psalm 65 or something, Psalm 65 verse 11, right? If I'm correct. 
But it says you crown the year with your goodness. Even the hard pathways drip with abundance. Yes, there we go. And, and look at that. You crown the year with goodness. And thy paths drop fatness. So what it is saying is that God's pathway is always guaranteed to prosper you. So, so we are not supposed to be looking for a way. The, the following God. Success is a byproduct. It is not a pursuit. It is a byproduct of obedience. Ah, someone's not hearing me. While the world chases success, we chase God. And find success along the way. You see, for the world, the end is success. I don't know if you get my point. The end of what they are pursuing is success. They are pursuing something that they say, when I reach this, I'll be happy. But what we are pursuing is God. And success is on the path to reaching God. Okay? Psalm 23 and verse 1. Right? Psalm 23 and verse 1. Let's read this together on the count of three. One, two, three. Okay, okay. The Lord is my? And then what? So, why am I not wanting? So, what is the, what is the way to not want? Huh? That the Lord must become your what? So are we looking for ways to not want? No, we are looking for God. And by virtue of finding or following God, we find ourselves not wanting. Success in God is very simple. Psalm chapter 1 and verse 3. I, I was talking to someone today. I said, you know me, I, I'm, 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 a, I'm, I'm trained to think as an economist and a lawyer, right? And in law, you have to produce precedence. So you don't just make random statements. And that's why it's important that, beloved, you also understand that even when you look at uh, the scriptural undertones, a lot of the things that we call, you know, uh, 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 spiritual warfare is your ability to argue a matter, right? You must find precedence for you to have a standing. Even what the Bible calls witnesses, a witness is somebody that has the, the right to testify. No, but you don't just become a witness. You, you must be given power to testify, right? But, but I was trained to think that you need to find two or three cases to back up what you're saying. So if I'm going to tell you that success is a byproduct, I'm going to show you that number one, the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want. So anytime you find yourself wanting, it is because you have abandoned the shepherd. That lack, huh? that lack is evidence of rebellion. Where are we? Okay, okay, wait there. Ah, uh, uh. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 19. Write these scriptures down. Lack is evidence of rebellion. <laughs> Read. One, two, three. Say it again. One, two, three. Okay. So, the Bible says, if you are willing and obedient. Okay. So, what is, what is the characteristic of this person? A willing person and also what? Obedient. That means, listen to me, in the kingdom... Willingness comes before obedience, huh? Oh. <laughs> it's not enough for you to just say, I did what you want. 
Because it's, it's God who works in us. He, he gives us the desire to do. He gives us the desire to do. He gives us the desire to do. Both to do and to will. He says, you must be willing and obedient. And what is the result of your willingness and obedience? You shall eat what? The good of the land. One version says the best of the land. I think it's the New King James Version. Or the NIV says the best of the land. Right? You shall eat the best portions of the land. Why? Because you are what? Willing and? So, we arrived at the good of the land through willing, willingness and obedience. I'm trying to teach you something. That this thing called success is not a pursuit of success. It's a pursuit of God. And success is a byproduct of following. Okay? I've given you. How many scriptures have I given you? Two, right? Let me give you another. Isaiah chapter 68. No, Psalm 68, sorry. And verse 6. Are we there? Let's read this together on count of three. One, two, three. I told you, lack is evidence of rebellion. The rebellious will dwell where? In dry land. But those that are no longer being led by God, eventually they will end up where? Dry land. Now, Psalm chapter 1 and verse 3. Right? And he shall be like a tree planted by the streams or the rivers of water. Now, now, for us to understand who this he is, let's go back to verse 1. Which describes who he is not. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, you no, know, sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Now, now, this is where I ask myself this question of who has bewitched us to believe we can obtain blessings from the counsel of the ungodly. From the seat of the scornful and from the way of the sinner. That man is not blessed. There is, oh, that man is not blessed. Do you know that there's money that can be a curse? Ask Achan. He took the accursed thing. What we are pursuing is the blessing. Do you understand what the blessing is? The blessing is an empowerment to prosper from God that comes out of a validation of right standing. Oh man. Nobody was blessed out of alignment. The blessing could only rest in alignment. Even the blessing itself is a byproduct of alignment. I don't think you understood what I've just said. Do you know that even the fact that we can be blessed, I know some people saying, no, we're blessed in Christ Jesus. Yes, it's because he's in an alignment. But do you know that if you are out of Christ Jesus, you cannot be blessed. You must find your way to be in. That those blessings are in 
Christ Jesus. So if you are not in, so blessed is the man that is not like this. Verse 2. But his delight, look at this. Is this not the same as what we're reading in Joshua? But his delight is where? Now, now, it doesn't say he reads the law. It says his delight. He finds delight in the law of the Lord. He finds joy in doing God's will. Listen, God doesn't want you to just do it. He wants you to enjoy doing it. And when somebody's delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. You see, what is he doing? The person is delighting. The person is saturating himself with the law. Right? Meditating on it day and night. Verse 3 now tells us what is the byproduct. The result is and he shall be. How did he be? He bead. <laughs> <laughs> because that's the only way you understand. You just rush to, and it shall be. Ah, how shall he be? How did he be? Oh, you just reached, he shall be. The Bible says, whatever he does prospers. How? How? I will bring forth fruit in season. How? By one who begins to meditate on the law day and night that you, are be, you have become fixated with fulfilling the will of the Lord. You, you have become a, a, a engulfed in this world that seeks to please God. Your delight is his will. This is the person that God is trying to build. One whose delight is his will. One whose desire is his word. And the byproduct is that he ends up in success. Because success is on the way to reaching God. Somebody needs to hear me. It means, beloved, that what we are looking for and what we are pursuing, that the success we want is to arrive at God. Any success that does not cause you to arrive at God is a temptation. And this is a trap. Are you with me? It means, beloved, you must be comfortable knowing that if I make a decision that may cost me money but has kept me in alignment with God, I've succeeded. If, if I make a decision that makes me end up lonely, Mm -hmm. but it is in right standing with God, I have succeeded. Listen to me. I'm not telling you that it is God who knew that it is not good for man. To, he knew. He knew that. But it doesn't say it, uh, what, by any means necessary. <laughs> you understand? That's not the way. It, it does not mean that loneliness. I know right now winter is kicking in. I am aware. And this is where bad decisions are made. So when I can win, that's good. <laughs> People make... But let me tell you something. The weather is no grounds for immorality. 
Be because hell is hot. I thought. So if you if if the code was grounds for immorality, hell will balance. Are, are you with me? This is not judgment. This this is us looking at things in the will and in the way. Of, you know, the world we are in has has become so corrupted that our minds find it impossible to obey the will of the Lord. And the problem is we have devised a faith, a faith that knows how to get things from God and doesn't realize that the faith is meant to get God. Faith was never devised for you to get things from God. You, you know why I say that? Because what faith did Adam need? Yet everything you are praying for is to go back to Eden. What, what faith? What faith did Adam use? Right? Now, the Bible says, let's go to, man, help me here. Holy Ghost. Help me, help me. Uh, Hebrews 11, verse 1, and then we'll go to verse 2. He says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, now people, I, <laughs> you know, this is the danger of reading the Bible in isolation. The danger is you've just arrived. Now, it, it, it cannot say now. Now, people have then said, therefore, faith is now. No. <laughs> I'm not shooting that down. That faith is in the now. I agree. And that could be the, the, a deeper revelation of something. Right? But the spirit of this text is trying to tell you now. Right? Now, it's like saying, you know, I, I, I want to encourage you to read this book. Now, now listen to me. Th that's what happened there. Now, you, you took now and then said, it's now. That now can easily be substituted for therefore. And to understand this, we need to go back into chapter 10. Right? Go back to chapter 10. Right? Go back a few verses. 36. Start from verse 36. For, for ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, that ye might receive the promise. So the context here is obedience. The context here is not attainment. The context here is not how much you can grab from God. The context here is how to get to God. Verse 37. For ye, for yet a little while, and that he shall come, right, that for yet a little while and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. So, so, so what is this talking about? This is not just talking about faith. It's actually talking about faithfulness. Let's go. Next verse. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Next verse. Now! <laughs> this is now what faith is. Because our believing, listen, 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 Leave it. Listen to me. It means our believing is not for the attainment of things. Our believing is to the saving of the soul. Let me ask you this question. How do you know you're saved? How? 
how? How do you know? You what? You what? You just what? How? Huh? You just believe. <laughs> By faith. Where did this faith come from? By hearing. Oh. How many times have you answered the altar call? <laughs> By hearing the revealed word. Let me also say by hearing the proceeding word that comes from the mouth. Listen, you need faith to believe you are saved. You, you can't say I'm, because everything in you will say, are you sure? <laughs> That's what, for, <laughs> listen, if you're not careful, Satan bends minds. Sometimes you find yourself saying, is this thing real? Are we sure? What if this is all a joke? This is now faith. Faith is the substance of the things we hope for. To the saving of the soul. That's what faith is for. The evidence of things. What? I can't see salvation. I can't see it. I just believe that my soul has been redeemed. There's nothing in the physical that points to this. But God gives us this instrument called faith. This vehicle called faith. That allows us to drive towards him. And the reason he has given us faith. Is because faith is the only thing. That can take us to him. Now the Bible says. Faith comes. Faith what? That means you don't. You don't develop faith. Faith is. Is a divine deposit. You said it correctly. The spirit bears witness with our witness, with our spirit. It, there's a witnessing in the spirit realm that produces this thing called conviction. And the intention is that we believe until the saving of the soul. We hold on until our souls are redeemed. We hang on. Until we believe. Until we see our maker. The Bible says he will come. Though he tarries, he will come. This is the same context. As though the vision tarries, it will come. This is not a vision. Oh my God. This is not a vision of your business. This is a vision of the word of the Lord. The coming of the word of the Lord. Though it tarries. Now, now verse 2 is where I'm going. Hey, help me God. Read this on the count of three. One, two, three. The elders what? Obtain the what? Now, how come the faith of the elders produced a good report, but you, your faith is for a good life? It means it's out of order. They needed faith. Oh man, we'll come back to this. Oh, bookmark this, right? Romans chapter 4 and verse 3. Man, are, are you getting something so far? So I want you to, to understand that God's intention when he wants you to succeed is that success is a byproduct of a continuous life of faith. The walk of faith, him ordering your steps, not just him ordering your steps, 
that what primarily drives your life is that you believe him. And believing it, okay. For what saith the scripture? Abraham what? Believed, believed God and it was credited to him what? So what did Abraham do? He believed God. N not just what God said. He believed God. A lot of people know how to believe for things, but they don't believe God. A lot of people know, but you know, right now I'm praying for, pray, do you believe God? Because to, there's a difference between believing in God and believing God. There are people who you ask, hey man, do you believe in God? Yeah, I believe in God. I believe there's something out there. Huh? You know what I'm saying? It's like saying, do you believe in marriage? Yeah, I believe in it. I see it. <laughs> but there's a difference between believing in marriage <laughs> and believing. So many people believe in the concept of God. Mm. Abraham did not believe in the concept of God. Abraham believed God. So when God said move, he left. See, when you believe God, he directs your steps. When you believe God, he orders your life. When you believe God, journeys are not based on how I feel. Journeys are based on obedience. The life of faith it's not a life of ambition. It's a life of alignment. The life of faith is one where you're constantly looking for where God is and trying to get to where God is. Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now, now let's go back to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 2 which now says, for by it, what is it? Faith, the elders obtained what? They obtained what? Now, we see who the elders are. Abraham. That Abraham believed God. And not only did he believe God, that belief in God is what initiated his journey out of Haran and began to move him towards Canaan. So that belief in God was backed by actions and obedience to what God has said. Right? Let me tell you something. You, you have not believed God until God tells you to do something. This man Abraham was, I, I wish we, one day we would tackle the faith of Abraham. Abraham's logic was amazing. God, he, God said, kill your son. And the book of Hebrews tells us that Abraham reasoned. <laughs> That God who was able to resurrect. He was willing to kill his son. Because he's like, God can resurrect. Now how did Abraham have that logic? He knew that the God that resurrected a dead man like me. Who brought life to a hundred year old man. Who, the Bible says Abraham had hope beyond hope. His body had died. He was just alive. But his body had died. And if God can bring life to a dead man. He knew God can raise a dead boy. Are you with me? So, by virtue of this, what we are seeing is by it, the elders obtained a what? So faith is our ability to hang on to the leading of God. A lot of what we experience as restlessness and tiredness and, and weakness is actually a result of rebellion. Of being a shepherdless people. Shepherdless people get weary. Oh, oh, 
Hey. I don't make loose statements. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 36. Shepherdless people. So when somebody starts saying, you know, right now, I'm just tired. It's giving you a report that you, you, are, you have started to move out of the realm in which you can hear the voice of the shepherd. You are straying from the locale because the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow or they do what I say. Do you hear that? They hear, my sheep hear my voice. Please find me that scripture. My sheep hear my voice. It's in John chapter 10, right? And the voice of a stranger, they do not follow, right? My sheep hear my voice and they do what? They follow me. So it means they hear and what they hear is what causes them to do what? So, so your faith is that you heard God. Oh no, man. And by faith, you followed what God said. Now do you understand why James says, show me your faith and I'll show you my works that come out of my faith. Now, now go back to the scripture where we're just coming from. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 36. Shepherdless people are weary. Right? Matthew chapter 9. And when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they did what? They what? They fainted and were scattered. As what? Sheep having no what? Shepherd. Because you cannot have your own direction. We, we, our direction is the Lord. Which way are you going? The way Jesus is going. People ask the wrong questions. Oh, well, where is my life heading? Ask the wrong question. It's Lord, where are you heading? Because if I'm heading the, listen, you know, you know, listen, listen. This is what I mean. Any time <laughs> the way of the Lord and the way of the world are in opposite directions. So if the way God designed it is that we're supposed to follow the Lord, right? But if we meet the Lord, if we meet him on the journey and he's going the other way, that is a moment of mercy. <laughs> I don't know if you understood what I've just said. Let me tell you, some encounters with God are not ones that you should celebrate. There are some that you should say, God, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. It means I've been going the wrong way this whole time. <laughs> and by God's mercy huh? do you remember the road to Damascus Damascus was the journey but Damascus is not where he ended up the Lord met him along the way because he was going the other way and that was a moment of mercy and that moment there was a soul soul why thou persecutest me there was an opportunity for repentance. So, so anytime we find ourselves weary, fainting, there's an opportunity where we can meet the master. But the way for us to be rejuvenated is for us to begin to follow his voice again. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They are waiting. Am I making sense to you? Am I making sense to you? I, I, this, is, this is what success is. Success is a journey of faith. It's a journey of constantly following God. Saying, Lord, where are you? Where are we going? What lies ahead? Show me. I, I, and the Bible says, 
For by it being faith, the elders obtained what? Good report. Go to verse Genesis, uh, Hebrews 11. Verse 3. Verse 3. Through faith, we understand that the world was framed by the word of God so that the things that are seen, right, were made of things which do, were not made of things which do appear. Verse 4. Abel offered unto God by faith a more excellent sacrifice. By faith, he offered a more excellent sacrifice. Now, now you, how come your faith is producing things in your life? The first example of faith we see is sacrifice. But you, the faith you know, is to add here again. So, hey, not sacrifice, soft life. You see, if you haven't encountered faith, it, it will not make sense to tithe. If you have not met faith, it will not make sense to give of your substance. It will not make sense to give your life. It, it, will, it will make no sense for somebody to sell a car to give to a building project. It will make no sense. <laughs> because these things come by faith. By which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Look at this. And I taught this the other day. God testifying. God what? Who is testifying? How come us, we are the ones with the testimony? Does God have a testimony of you? Faith gives God the testimony of you. Remember what the Bible says? By faith, the elders obtained a good report. Who, who, who was reporting? I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Verse 5. This is where I'm going. Read this on the count of three. One, two, three. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Many people say, oh God, like, let me walk. <laughs> like Enoch, oh God. You know, there are days where we want to, when we read that scripture, and we just want to be spiritual. Oh God, let me walk with you. And that he was translated because he was not found, right? God had translated him. But look at this. For before his translation, he had this testimony. He had what? What was his testimony? That what? Hey. Some of us would commit suicide if that was the only testimony we had. That's your testimony. What's your testimony? That I followed the Lord. Ah? Huh? What do you have to show? <laughs> 2023, that's not a testimony. 2023, the testimony must be, and then, somebody sent money. And then, someone remembered me. And then, the door opened. And then, the iron gates And then, my ex-boyfriend remembered me. We had not spoken since 2005. And he just sent a DM. I said, how are you? You, you see, you see, I, I'm trying to explain to you that the real testimony is that you Pleased God. What did Enoch take with him? What 
What did he take? I'm sure he even left some people with, with in Congo. He's been taken. Ah, why are we dead? <laughs> but the Bible says he did what? Please God. If there's anything you can walk out of this life with, it should be that your life pleased God. Now, what does it mean for your life to please God? It means your life becomes a pleasing aroma. So Enoch was translated because his life became a sacrifice and it rose up to the heavens. And when the Lord smelt that sweet and savoring aroma, he took him up. Because his life, remember, Bible must translate Bible, right? Scripture must translate what? Scripture. Okay. Go back to verse 3, verse 4. Verse 4 tells us this. Because by faith, Abel offered a more excellent what? Then, so the context here is sacrifice. And the next thing we know, we know that Abel's sacrifice pleased God. So the same way Abel's sacrifice pleased God is the way Enoch becomes an example for our lives to be pleasing. Why? Because Enoch walked with Every step was in step with God. Every decision was in step with God. Every movement was in step with God. And that, what he was unaware of, is what it was creating an aroma. So some of you don't know. The little things you are doing are raising an aroma to the heavens. And the, whole, the heavens are... are are saying, look at my daughter. Look at him. Look at her. She doesn't just take a job based on salary. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Actually, there is. I take that back. There is. No, you know it's time we start saying things that is, as it is, huh? There is. Your decision making must be based on God. And when this is your methodology towards life, your modus operandi, your approach, you find that you end up in this place called success. Not because you are pursuing it, but because you are pursuing God and God can never be in an unsuccessful place. Prosperity is his nature. He by nature must prosper. Wherever he is, life is. So wherever he is, nothing can die. So our pursuit is a pursuit of him and we stumble into this thing called life because we're pursuing him as our life. Are you with me? Oh, let, let, let's, go. let's go. I want to show you this. We are, we're almost done. Verse 6, quickly, 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 by faith. Now, but without faith, it is impossible to what? To please him. You see that? Where is the context of this, sir? Where is the context? Go back. You don't read your Bible. You just read oh, without faith. It's impossible to please God. How? We, are, we just came. Go back to verse 5. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he what? Verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to do what? Please God. Now scripture tells us whatever is not of faith is sin. So any decision you make out of faith can never please God. And do you know how you made a decision of faith? Do you know how? 
because you will arrive at God. Any decision that leads you to God is a decision of faith. Because your faith is in God. When we begin to develop a faith outside of God, this is where idolatry comes in. This is where manipulation comes in. This is where familiar spirits creep in. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. Why? Because Enoch walked with God. Faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing of what? Now, when you hear the word of God, you can also substitute that by hearing the voice of God. Because my sheep hear not my word, they hear my what? This is what success is. This is what success is. For some of us, success is preaching on the corner of Vitanda and Madala Street. If God has ordained that my preaching to you is to preach in this corner, if I take myself to Potter's house, and there are many people who take... <laughs> I mean, I know people who, <laughs> who've reached platform. <laughs> no, my father in the Lord is a great man. He's a man of faith. I love, I love him to bits. I've never seen that. That man cannot, he, he never forces any plot, nothing. Recently, he preached in a church and we're like, how did you get here? He preached in this platform <laughs> in another country of a man that had not spoken to him for five years. And the next message is, can you come and, hey. So if God has ordained, listen, this is what faith will do. Faith will be, oh man. Faith is like Jonah. You want to go and preach in Tashish. But unfortunately, Nineveh is your audience. If you take yourself to Tashish, you will encounter storms. And you may have a powerful message for Tashish, but has no impact. But you reach Nineveh and say five words, repent. Repent because now it's time. I, I don't know. Jonah literally said like five words. And the Bible says everyone including the king wept. Because he was in alignment. I'm trying to teach you that you don't, success is not an issue of tomorrow. Success is an issue of today. That if my life is in alignment, my life pleases God. My life is in alignment. My life is a sacrifice and offering. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently what? So, so, so he is a rewarder. He is a what? Of them that diligently what? Seek rewards. The rewards are a byproduct of seeking him. It's a byproduct. It is not the main thing. It is a byproduct. Can, 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 can you give me two minutes? I want to wrap this up by saying 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 5. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 to verse 11. And we're going to pray. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, how I long, 
I want you to see, based on what we have learned today, that faith is an entry point. It's a what? It's an entry point into this life of God. And what God wants to do, his success in you, is by his ability to, to bestow virtues on you. That you are, the scripture says that we are being built into living stones. Built into living stones. Now, that means that God now also then wants to add to our faith. You see, you see, this is why I say faith is the entry point. Because the Bible says, besides this, giving all diligence, add to your what? Add to your what? That means faith is entry level. Elder, you, 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 you know when you want to buy a car and you go and buy a showroom car and then they'll tell you there's a Hilux. There are two Hiluxes or there are two Ford Rangers. The new Ford Ranger, if the Lord leads any of you, I'm turning 40 in February, right? I've changed my request from the iPhone to the Ford <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> I saw it and I spoke in tongues. Yeah, right? When you go and look at the vehicle, they'll tell you, you see one, one model that says it will be maybe like $35,000. And the same car will be $45,000, the next one. And you ask, what is the difference? And they'll say there's some add-ons and you will pay a greater price you know it's the same thing in God huh? you will pay a greater price for add-ons to, to be custom made you will pay a price oh. any man that you saw who became great in God there's a price. Look at this. It says, beside giving all diligence, add to your faith what? Virtue. To your virtue what? Knowledge. To knowledge, temperance. Do you, do you know what temperance means? Huh? What is temperance? It's a very important word. Scripture says that he who striveth for mastery must be temperate in all things. What does that mean? It means must not be given too much to anything. You mustn't eat too much. Oh yes. Some of you who have demons when you they know they, 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 they all drop their heads. They, now they've all dropped their heads. Though there are people that if you declare fast. <laughs> But, 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 but he said you must be what? Temperate. You look, don't look at me. Look at me. Right? You must be temperate in all things. Okay? So, God has to teach us sometimes to not love some things too much. Right? And one of the ways he teaches that is through fasting. That's why fasting is important. Right? Because... Bible then also says, and to temperance, what? Patience. Now, there's no chronological or there's no order of importance here, but it also means that it's also possible for you to fast and be an impatient person. Right? Yeah, that means you're just waiting for it. <laughs> right? Or you have a temper. Now, and to patience, what? Godliness. And to godliness, Brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. Now, verse 8 is where I'm going. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of of our Lord. So, so it means people can have faith but be barren. 
because they don't have the virtues. They don't have the virtues. It, it means, listen to me, what God is more interested in is changing your character than changing your conditions. If he can change your character, your conditions will follow. But sometimes your conditions can change, but your character doesn't. And what God prospers is the condition. Oh, that's what he prospers. That's what he guarantees to prosper. So, verse 9. Okay? But he that lacketh these things is what? Is blind and cannot see afar off. Look at the next line. And has forgotten that he was what? Purged from his? It, it therefore means that he who does not have these virtues will eventually go back to his old ways. So it's these virtues that keep us, remember what I said? That, that obedience is the pathway to prosperity. And what fights success or prosperity or God prospering his ways in our life is our old nature. And the way to keep us out of the old nature is to gain virtues. So the object of faith, listen. Mm, can, can, can I talk? Can I talk? The object of faith is not to change your house. It's to change you. <laughs> no man can change without faith. Faith changes me. So that's the primary responsibility of faith, to change us. It changes us. So how can we boast in a success that doesn't change us? Meditate. On this word, be careful to observe and do, and you shall make your way prosperous, and you shall have good. Now that's oxymoronic. How can you have good and success? Meaning there is bad 